I am a mental health therapist. One of my schizophrenic clients said he was seeing a girl in his room and he said she was talking to him. We believed it to be a hallucination as he was living alone. The doctor I was with decided to challenge his delusion and had him take a picture of her so we could meet her. During the next visit, he brought a picture. And yes, she was there. To our astonishment and horror, there was a picture of him on the couch with a strange creamy, ghost-like image of a girl hovering behind him, shrouding him in white like wings or hair, very light in color, but subtle shimmering image. What was eerie was seeing him sitting on the couch with his head down, very depressed looking. She was literally haunting him. All our jaws hit the floor. You could hear a pin drop. Everyone examined the picture and we could tell it was real. Dude was very low functioning and could not have shopped it. Shit got real. We were haunted. The doctor in utter amazement knew medication wouldn't treat this and said, I can't help you with this. You are going to need to see your clergy for this. Once I was staying over a friend's house and was sleeping in her bed. She had a large double bed pushed up against the wall, so we both slept in there. I slept with my back facing the room that night, with my friend sleeping next to me. About midway through the night, I started having a very elaborate dream about work. The dream wasn't anything significant, just something stupid. Then as it progressed, it became more ominous. A man wearing a mask, similar to a Japanese kabuki mask, was chasing me around my workplace, attempting to kill me. Then at some point, I began to wake up as I felt someone standing directly behind me. The dream progresses again and the man has found me. At that point, my wakeful state began to set in further as I could feel someone gently stroking my hair. Terrified, I lay there, slightly disorientated, as I was still somewhat in my dream. Then I hear a gravelly voice from behind me say, hello little girl, and a number of other things I can't remember, as well as the sensation of someone still stroking my hair. I am fully awake at this point, but lying still as can be, with my eyes pressed shut, fearing for my life. Finally, I mustered up the courage to sit up in bed and look around the room. There was no one there. To this day, I can still remember the deep gravelly sound of his voice. The thing that made it real for me is when I told the dream to my friend, she recounted several harrowing tales of seeing an older man's spirit wandering around her house. When I was about 13 or 14, I lived in a normal block house in a suburban neighborhood with my family. We were told by the previous tenant that her husband had died in the house, but we weren't told specifically where. One night after I turned the lights off to go to sleep, I heard a loud rustling noise and then a bang that caused me to jump up and turn the lights on. Everyone in the house heard it and ran into the hallway to see if I was okay. As I looked into my room to see what the noise was, I saw my jewelry box, which had a set of doors on the front which latched shut, fully open with all the drawers hanging open. I threw that thing in the closet so quick and never pulled it out to use again. I still heard things in that house. One night I was watching something funny on TV in my room and heard a man, seemingly sitting right next to me, laugh in my ear as clear as day. It wasn't from the TV. When visiting my sister's college, she sent me into the theater to get some stuff for her. It was after dark and the building was locked but she lent me her keys. Now, she told me that the place had a reputation for being haunted, but being the skeptic I am, I took the keys and hustled off without a second thought. I let myself in, headed to the closet she said her stuff was in, and someone walked up behind me. No kidding, I could hear the footsteps, feel the floorboards move and hear them creak. Heck, I could even hear the rustle of fabric moving. And there was just that indefinable sense of there being someone else there, you know, 
How you can tell when someone's walked into a room even if you didn't really see or hear them? Yeah, well, I turned around fully expecting to have to explain why I was in a locked building after hours, and there was no one there. After I shat myself, I started singing at the top of my lungs to mask the now ominous silence, grabbed my sister's stuff and bolted out of the building. My sister apologized for days, and I never went into that building alone again, day or night. I was 19. I used to walk to Denny's from my house every evening, leaving around 8 or 9 p.m. There, I would hang out with my friends, smoke and drink coffee, and play cards until 2 or 3 in the morning. This one particular evening I left later than usual, probably around 11 p.m. or so. The Denny's was 5.7 miles from my house, so it was a bit of a walk. So I'm walking along like I had done dozens of times before. I get to a wooded area that always got dark, and I started hearing music from a house off the road. Just heavy bass drums with a real steady beat. Not a big deal, because people out that way always had big parties. I continue walking, but the music doesn't go away. I stop and listen real carefully and it sounds more like drums in a continuous loop. There's not another parallel road for a couple miles from where I am, so it cannot come from a vehicle. I continue walking and for about two miles I continue to hear this music. Never gets louder and never gets quieter. I stop and listen again. It sounds a lot like Native American drums. I walk again quickening my pace. As I walk, listening to the drums that are following me, I start to smell gunpowder. I walk a mile listening to drums and smelling gunpowder. I may have started getting really creeped out, so I'm not sure if I heard footsteps behind me or if it was just my imagination. I only hear them for a couple hundred feet. Then I walk into a clearing in the woods and it all disappears. The drums stop, I don't smell gunpowder, no footsteps, except mine. Just me walking. I get to Denny's entirely shook up, but I didn't share my story for a few days. <laughs>